wife's name is pronounced Janelle, but I've, I've heard you say Janelli. I've heard you call her Gina. I think you said Jenna. <laughs> what what well, does she like I, to go by if if it's not you, her husband? <laughs> well, her name is Janelle. Janelle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People get it confused because it's spelled with J A Y. Uh, y. Right. So right. J J N L. Okay. So Y is silent. Okay. So J Janelle. How how does she play into your art business? How how does she help you with the business? In a big way. Yeah, I bet. And and I knew this. I, I knew this from the time I was like eighteen. I said, you know, I'm going to do things the hard way on my own for as long as I can. But as soon as I find the right girl, <clears throat> that's going to stop. I'll balance my own checkbook for right now. I'll go to the bank and make all my deposits. I'll do all the shopping. I'll do, I'll buy everything on my own. I'll pay my own rent. I'll get, I'll buy my own car and pay, make the house, the, <clears throat> the rent payments and the car payments. <clears throat> but as I knew that when I found somebody that was out the window, <laughs> because it's just not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I, she, she takes care of kind of the, the personal and the financial to, to free up your time to do your art. Exactly. And believe me, I am the envy of a lot of people that have nothing to really, even if they have, you know, a wife or, or they're married, they don't have somebody that likes the business end of things. So that's literally what I mean by a better half. I like the idea of having a better half. I want somebody as smart, if not smarter than I am. I've had a lot of girlfriends that are like that. And uh, that's how I learned the things that I learned. You're, you're when you're, when you're when you're uh, put on this earth, you're just an empty vessel, and <clears throat> it's all about learning what you can from every interaction you have with another human being, uh, whether you like people or not. Which I don't tend to really, you know, like. I think very little of most people. They're just not worthy of uh, of respect or admiration. But <clears throat> with Janelli, yeah, all that stuff. Get back in topic. Yeah, she takes care of all that stuff for me. And she's just, she's so good at that. Janelle has got qualities that are just, um, you know, beyond earthly. I, I read that uh, the, the movie director, David Lynch, he uh, does everything to get in a similar setup. He, he surrounds his, his office and his life with, with assistants that take care of all any little thing, deciding what's for breakfast, what clothes he wears, <laughs> you know, every little decision he, he pulls out of the mix and he, he has assistants running around taking care of everything so he can focus all his energy on creating art. And uh, I, I, I just think, wow, pe people that are able to uh, put, put together a relationship like that and just focus as, as much time as possible on, on their art and, you know, I, I think I think how how lucky. <laughs> it's very double edged. <clears throat> if you don't, if you don't, if you've never known what it's like, if you're a rich kid, you've never known what it's like <clears throat> to uh, change a flat tire, or uh, <clears throat> or go without um, <clears throat> money for a couple of days, or have to decide: do I buy this or buy that based on the fact that I have very little money? You miss out on on some of the strongest character building moments that you'll ever know in your existence. So <clears throat> I hope Lynch had a lot of years of, um, of toil before he had those assistants, assistants just waiting on him like that, because that really, that in itself causes a huge imbalance in people. You lose touch with an important other side of life. I, I know he, he was very poor, young, young years, you know, uh, college and after he, he was living in poor crime ridden neighborhoods, uh, scared for his wife and kid and stuff. Uh, so I, I think he is one of those that, uh, you know, did, did definitely work his way up. <laughs> I, I, think, I think there's a really good chance that may happen to me, the whole Lynch scenario. <laughs> but I want to be very careful about that, Chris. Uh, I want to make sure, you know, I'll give you an example of him. <clears throat> these are, my, I guess these are my tangents. Uh, I knew guys, a lot of guys that worked at DreamWorks and Disney, but I was hanging out at DreamWorks a lot before all this crap went down and <clears throat> you needed the, the third degree before you walked in into the front door. And I remember asking about 
I was very curious about how Katzenberg dealt with the whole crew. I mean, he built this thing. He spent the billions on this on this campus. And I said, does he ever come over and talk to you guys? And <clears throat> the answer was no. Yeah, he gives us free lunch, but <clears throat> when 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 he wants to find out what's going on, he doesn't go himself. He sends his assistants over to say, "How's it going?" Okay, they're, they're, that's that's a, that's a guy who's been derailed in life, right there. Uh, <clears throat> so, from those examples, have I learned what not to do? I learn most of what not to do from everyone I'm around because that's basically what they do. They do the dumb version of what they should do, which is a smart version. They don't tend to do that. So <clears throat> from there, I've learned I will never be someone like that. Um, you know what I mean about this kind of stuff? You have, to be, you, ha you have to be your own boss at all times. You have to be your own man. You have to be your own, of your own mind. You just, if you're going to be in charge of something, you have to be especially careful and thoughtful about not losing touch with a, re a greater reality than <clears throat> the fact that you can have a hundred assistants, you know, doing your nails and giving you a massage five times a day while everyone else <clears throat> is going through the opposite. Uh, <clears throat> and again, I've learned from the best too. Albert Dorn, the guy that ran the, uh, the famous artist school was great about that. Oh, he was just dead on. He, this guy knew the name of everyone down to the janitor <clears throat> from the building that he, he, he rented. Makes you feel <clears throat> like you're part of a, a family or at least like you're valued. Exactly. So if you lose touch with that, look out. You're, you're, about, you're about to strip away half, half of what you, <clears throat> you spent your life becoming. When you start taking the easy way out like that, that's what, that's what makes people smart rather than dumb, is knowing those things, knowing those pitfalls. It's like, it's, it's like the rock star that gets famous too early. Most rock stars always tend to be in their 20s, even in their teens. And they grow up, or child actors, they grow up with a very distorted sense of reality. That's not, that's not reality. That's a reality that will go poof within minutes literally and uh, if if you if you've looked into people like this and heard their stories and heard the interviews you realize <clears throat> that's the worst reality you can ever be sucked into because it's not reality it's it's a it's a fabrication certainly to hit it early before you know any other reality if if you can hit it later af after you've learned the alternatives <laughs> then you, you can appreciate it better, right? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. At, at, at 63 eight years of age, I'm, <clears throat> I think I've got, I'm ready. When I met Janelle, I was finally ready, more than ready to meet someone like her. <clears throat> if I get my show, my animated Nexus cartoon show, I'm, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. And am I a little nervous about it? Yeah, I'm nervous about aspects of it. Um, I'm, which we can get into or not get into, but um, I'm very aware of, <clears throat> of my uh, temperamental shortcomings when it comes to dealing with a, a group of more than two people, say. In a show, you're working with hundreds. Right, right. It, it, it's, it's exactly what you were talking about earlier about movies versus comics. <laughs> so yeah, that, I think the most important thing <clears throat> that I've, that, that we've discussed since we got on the, the line here was, uh, was that, was that um, overall viewpoint of, of being in comics. And I'll tell you something else. When I used to go to all these, these, these huge animation studios like Disney and, and DreamWorks, <clears throat> when people would meet me, they would, they would get excited and they would always tell me the same thing. I want to do a comic. Now, these were guys that were getting paid much better than we were. <clears throat> and all they wanted to do was stop being anonymous and do work that was theirs, their property, not someone else's property. Screw the paycheck. I wanted to be artistically fulfilled. And that's, <clears throat> that should not be overlooked. And people that do overlook it, I think they need a gentle nudging to get back to a, 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 a reality that, <clears throat> that really spells out what your life, what your time here on earth is supposed to be about, which is internal satisfaction. 
fulfillment. Think of all the guys that do all these sacrificial things in life that uh, make them, they feed their soul, you know, and they don't make any money at it, that kind of thing. You know, that's kind of, it's kind of analogous to the point that I'm <clears throat> talking about with, uh, <clears throat> with the whole income thing. <clears throat> so when you look at it like that, I'm about the happiest guy on the earth because I'm always challenged. Always. And comic books are just the greatest, the greatest thing. Well said, Steve. Yeah, that's great. Um, I wanted to ask you about kind of your, your daily routine, how, how yeah. much time you're, you're spending. Like, uh, I, I don't see in, over the last few years that much uh, output of, of actual comics work, but, but I do see you're, you're always doing uh, a lot of great commissions. I'm curious if you're doing some, some illustration or I, I know you're painting. Uh, I, I know that you're doing uh, your, your kind of warm-up exercises and your sketchbooks. How, how does the time break out? Uh, you know, and obviously it's going to change week to week or month to month, depending on if something's on the plate. But also, um, how, how does that amount of work spent, how, how does it kind of divide uh, from like your, your income, you know, you, you spend all this time on art and this much of it is illustration and this much is uh, commissions for fans and maybe this much is comics. What, what, like in a year, how much of your income is, is actually comics versus commissions versus, uh, you know, your teaching? I, I'm just curious how, how it all breaks down, time, time and income. About half and half, I would say. Mm -hmm. Half, half uh, being what and what? Uh, commissions and, and comics. Hmm. Okay. But, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm very unusual in the way that uh, when people, I think the biggest turnoff personally I have is when people talk about, well, I'm not making enough money to do this. Mm -hmm. That is just, um, what's the word? Anti, uh, antithetical, something like that. It's just not the way I think about life. And thank God I don't, because if I did, I would be chasing that dollar before I would be chasing internal fulfillment. And that, that to me is, you might as well be expired. You might as well not even have a life when you, when you think like that, because you can't win that kind of a life. You always be, it's always never enough. My never enough is <clears throat> learning. I just, the, the idea, you know, sitting here, look, I mean, I've got this, I've got this commission going on right now. And I, I don't know if it would surprise anybody, but <clears throat> with all the requests I get, I turn down in even half of them, at least half. I, I, I don't want to do them. So it's never based on, God, I just want to be greedy and make this. That's a form of uh, death to me. So here's an example of what I do. I did this, uh, <clears throat> someone wanted the Phantom of the Opera, which is a nice challenge. It's not Galactus or some other damn thing. It's or element lad or some stupid comic book thing it's <clears throat> something to really challenge me so i did this little rough right here and <clears throat> this is the piece so far that i've done and the guy doesn't know that i've gone all the way he's not he's paying literally about uh one eighth of what it should be worth but i got carried away because i'm an artist and i want that personal fulfillment and he's going to be thrilled because I went way beyond what I was supposed to do. So you can see my thinking is very different than, than someone who's, uh, who's in pursuit of the almighty dollar. That's just, oh, God. I mean, I, maybe there's people like, like, you know, when Trump was a businessman, you know, the art of the deal, and that was, that was what really excited him in life, just to make more and more or lose it and make, make it all over again. <clears throat> I'm, I'm an artist, you know, I, I have an artistic soul and that, that soul tells me um, <clears throat> where I need to go in life. <clears throat> it's a very, very strong intuition. And I always know down to very small things. And whereas I don't have any kind of a daily planner or anything like that, I don't think about the future. I think about, I always think about right now because that's enough for me to handle this the right now aspect of life. 
what do I want to do right now? And the answer always comes to me. It's right for me to think like that, not others necessarily, but it's for me. You know, that's what the whole thing of life is about is to figure out what's right for you. Because you're not someone else. Last I checked, you're just you. And that's it. So we all try to figure out <clears throat> this. We all, we're all engaged in this tightrope act. And <clears throat> you, need, you need that pull to balance yourself. Some people that don't have that, that emotional pull, um, you know, that, that's being much more risky than you, you should have to be in life. Life has got so many potential pitfalls and, and uh, catastrophes that can occur at any moment. Uh, <clears throat> any of us can be taken within, within seconds. That's just the way it works. You, you brought up a, oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I, no, go ahead no, and finish. I'm, okay. You, so you, 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 you brought up two things I, I want to touch on more, but first really quickly. Uh, so, so comics and commissions makes up about half and half. I know that you're teaching, doing seminars and things at, at uh, even at schools and things. Does, does that make much money then? Or is that more just sort of a personal satisfaction to be out and share? Well, I want to make sure I get what I'm worth. <clears throat> that's the one thing I need to uh, mention about the money aspect. <clears throat> it, no one gets you cheap. And I was told a long time ago, a very, a very apt adage, which is if they get you cheap, they treat you cheap. So never let them get you for next to nothing. Don't give anything away. People won't appreciate it. For me, <clears throat> once the, the money is settled and the airfare and the hotels are taken care of and they fly Janelle along with me, <clears throat> it's all about the interaction with those people that have paid this money to get something from me that <clears throat> will alter their lives in a better way. If I'm not there to make their life a little smarter, a little better, then I don't see the point of anything. So that's why I, I, I genuinely enjoy being an accumulator of knowledge because knowledge is what is going to make the difference between someone that just gets up and rambles, which I do sometimes. Janelle tells me all the time, you're always off topic. You're always off topic, you know. I, I have <laughs> never seen that within you before <laughs> in our three-hour <laughs> discussion. <laughs> well, it, the mundane stuff of, you know, what uh, – sometimes I love to talk about what brush do you use. That, I, sometimes I love that. Uh, but <clears throat> the fact that I, I go off in these philosophical tangents – tells you that I, I, I don't know I don't know what it tells people uh, but yeah I that's I hear that all the time you're you're getting you didn't answer the damn question Steve you know that kind of thing let's just call it a personal flaw all right <laughs> yeah my head's in the clouds all the time yeah so uh, the, the next thing I was going to mention is but before I hopped on with you, I, I was just kind of poking around on your Facebook and Twitter and stuff and, and looking at all the sketches you've been posting, the commissions you've been posting on Twitter. And uh, I was blown away uh, along the lines of what you were saying about, about how you, you can't just, you know, take the easy route. You're, you're always challenging yourself and pushing yourself and, and trying for that next, you know, how, how can I tackle this next challenge? And, and you see that in, in these uh, commissions that you're doing, that ev every pose, you know, you, you have to understand muscles working in different ways and, and the, you know, the uh, different Jessica. camera angles and, and just there, there's so much packed in every one of those. I, I really uh, see, seeing them all in a row like that, you know, it's like it's like uh, going through your sketchbooks. It, it's the same thing. You you just see completely different pose, com completely different pose. It, it's not like you know. There's so many artists out there. They they figure out a shortcut for drawing a face, and then every face they draw, it's that same angle, that same shortcut, and just a slightly different haircut or you know a different colored mask. You know, and uh, so I, I really admire that that amount of work and it, it really comes through you really see it in your work I, yeah I just that's wanted great to share that with you yeah yeah th those are the kind of things that um empower me to to always stay in the path that i've always been on uh i just recently got a bunch of comments in from one of my newsletter 
uh, talks, and it was, uh, I, I was, I was, I didn't know what to make of it. I mean, these people were so intelligent, and the kind of people that wrote in, and the comments they made showed me that if anyone would ever want an audience made up of, of really thoughtful, sensitive yeah. <clears throat> people on more on the on the artistic side than the intellectual side, which is kind of empty at times, then I've got the perfect audience. So I, I I take that I take that as really one of the highest compliments you you can ever aspire to in life. And that's all because I don't listen to anyone but me. I know my own answers. And I, I came to, to a conclusion around my 30s that people do not give enough credit to their, their inner voice. That inner voice is what directs you in life. And it's, it's, it, I, it's I, I guess you would just categorize it as part of your soul. So all these people are walking around asking other people about their life. Now that's, that's an important part. We're always learning from others, always. But <clears throat> within us, there are the real direction, <clears throat> even the stuff that comes from other people is being funneled into you. There's a very specific, I'm sure Elizabeth knows all about this right here. And I'd love to know, you know, someone who's been trained what did, what did she go through? Uh, four, six, eight years? It, I think it was supposed to be five or six, but it, it took her a little longer because she was, you know, working, uh, putting herself through school. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, yeah, she would be a lot of fun to talk to. I, I would. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so I, I get a lot of offers to do comic books, but a lot of times there's conflicts between me and the people that are, that are um, <clears throat> basically the editors. Like for example, um, when an editor tells me that I, this is for people that follow me, you know, they know this is a bit of a big thing with me. When they start, when the editors start letting the lawyers take over and the lawyers tell them what the editors can and cannot do in books. For example, like if I put a Maserati as a car, is that they don't exist in real life, or I, I put some kind of some, some anything that that they tell me this is from them <clears throat> that's copyrighted, it's out. Oh. Okay, I have a bit of a problem with that. So what happens, Chris? What ends up happening is that I that I turn down literally dozens of projects because of the way <clears throat> I think about this stuff, and the way they're beholden to others to tell me what I can and can't do. Literally, I tell them to go to hell when they pull that crap on me because I think that's nonsense. That's not a truth in life. That's a transient truth based on some idiot's uh, perception of things at the moment. Well, that changes in five minutes. A, a lot, the larger truth, the one that I follow, does not change. It can, it can bend. It, it can... Uh, <clears throat> it can uh, It can be malleable, <clears throat> but you can't bend it so far that it's going to break. So if I start, if I start uh, <clears throat> consenting to those rules that I think are idiotic, then who 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 am I doing a favor to? I'm not I'm not doing a favor to my business. I'm not doing a favor to the the other artists that consent to that crap. I'm <clears throat> I'm standing up for what I believe in, and I'm I'm sorry, dumbasses out there. I learned those kind of, th that way of thinking from comics. <laughs> the very people that are telling me what I can't do is where I learned my ethical sense from. So to those people, rethink your damn lies and get someone who's uh, a patsy, an unqualified, wimpy patsy to do your garbage for you. You're not gonna get it from me. That's critical to my, to my life and my image in the business. If I draw it, I endorse it. <clears throat> and if you give me all this garbage about drawing something that's supposed to be the most creative uh, field that you could ever be, uh, be engaged in for a life, a life's, uh, uh, <clears throat> a life's calling, you got the wrong guy. Because it never used to be like that. It just is now. So that stuff is out with me. 
so a lot of those jobs get turned down. I mean, they, I've been offered so many things, <clears throat> but the corporate climate of comics is, is so, is so stuffy that, um, you know, that's why you don't see me doing comic books all the time. <clears throat> Something that starts out as, yeah, we, Steve, we want you to do Superman. We want you to do Supergirl. We want you to do Batman. <clears throat> Ends up not happening for those reasons. The only place that I'm free is Nexus, and that's because of Mike Richards and a dark horse. <clears throat> he doesn't get in my way with idiotic mandates that have nothing to do with the creative process, that aren't hurting anybody. So that's the place that I'm free. Now, as far as Nexus goes, we have a huge, huge volume of new material coming out, I believe, sometime this summer, mm. if, if we can get our act together. And I'll have my act together. They just need to get theirs together and get a heavy promo uh, bandwagon going for, uh, for the launch. So does that answer? Maybe that was not, <laughs> not so crazy of an answer. Does that, is that more down to earth for explaining? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Why yeah. I'm not in comics all the time anymore. Yeah, yeah. It has everything to do with the editors and the political climate of what's going on at the moment. I don't believe about at the moment. It's nonsense to me. I remember when Marvel took off, took <clears throat> this, I, the, a mandate came down. This is how, what a bunch of wimps the people at Marvel are. <clears throat> no more cigars or cigarettes in people's mouths. In the so pages for, of the comics. Yeah. Gotcha. If, if I, and I, I put them in anyway. They took them out. So there's a lot of people standing around like this <laughs> with nothing in their head, their hands. Well, <clears throat> when that kind of crap started to overtake our business, man, that's why you don't see me drawing way more comics than I do now. That's why. Uh, the, it, it's interesting to me. Um, I, I knew that you have standards for what what work you want to put out and uh and, you know that that can be construed you know the the editors from their point of view might be saying oh steve is difficult to work with and that's why you know this and that um i'm curious i i, I was i was excited to hear that people do keep coming to you trying to lure you in with with projects and obviously it's it's a disappointment from fans like me that would love to see more of your work um because my my concern would be you you becoming branded as that difficult guy and and no one wanting to take a chance to work with you you know what i mean yeah well <clears throat> life is a perspective that's another one of my great adages right there uh, from the editor's point of view, I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> I'm someone that, that gives them a lot of grief when, they, when that's, uh, <clears throat> they've got rules they have to follow and I don't follow them. From my point of view, it's the opposite. So what, what point of view do you think is going to win? Well, if I, was, if, I was, if I was a different person and thought a different way, you would be seeing a lot more comics coming out from me. <clears throat> but at, but at, at what cost? To destroy my own soul? No, that's the one thing they can never take from you, which they would if they could. They won't get mine. I, th this gets me thinking about, I, I interviewed uh, Kelly Jones, and he, he was talking about uh, this, this same issue, but he actually chose to tackle it from a, a different angle. He said, if, if you think about the old uh, movies of the 1940s, this was a very strict studio system. Where, where the studios, they, they had tight reins, you know, on not, not just, okay, we need, we're, we're going to make a movie about this book. We're going to make it into a movie and you're the one to make it, you know, and these are going to be the actors that are going to be in your movie. And you, you can't mention any of the drugs that were such an important part of the book, for example, you know, and, and it, it was very strict, but despite that strictness, there, there were these great artists who found a way within that system to have their own voices and, and to create their own brand within that system. And so Kelly was arguing, you know, I, I agree there there are a lot of problems and restrictions. However, 
he chose to do his best within that system to create his own thing in it following those rules and it, and wow. it's interesting you guys your 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 career paths have gone in in different ways you know and i i would say <clears throat> for for better or worse now we have kelly's body of work and your body of work you know what i mean so it, it's just a different path you've chosen based on your your values and what's important to you afraid so well my hat's off to kelly because he found a way to survive within the system. That's just not possible for me. It, it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, who can account for these things, why they are? You know, I think people listening to me will be able to glean a lot more insights than I'm even aware of myself as to why I do what I do and why I have to do it the way I need to do it rather than, I mean, I, I think, <clears throat> I, I don't know how far I can compromise. Um, uh, you know, the Birdman script that I did for DC, okay, for, for one example, was absolutely stellar. This script was so perfect. It was every, there wasn't a beat out of place. And I don't think I had really any problem with any of it during the, the entire time. While well, I was working with, the, you know, one of my girl editors from DC, who was wonderful. But I, I didn't encounter a single problem with that. When I got into Superman territory, that's when they're, they're, they're ready with their microscope. And that's just, that, 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 that those two cases may, may you know, give you an idea of how drastic difference in reality, uh, how people monitor <clears throat> the content of what goes on in the book rather than some property like property like Birdman but to give you one example of a really great script and a lot of fun I had with that that's one of them right there so it shows I'm not totally out the lunch for this stuff <laughs> I'm not so unbendable that I you know <clears throat> I uh, I can't work with anyone that's just not true again careful self-monitoring will make sure that you don't go off the path too far you don't want to be like that Steve, this has been so fantastic visiting with you and getting to see you again after all these years. I, I don't have any other questions for you, uh, except I'm just going to end with um, this, this documentary and this opportunity to talk with artists. It, it's called Diary of a Struggling Comics Artist. And uh, it, it's, it's about just kind of revealing some struggles we've faced as creators are, are there any last struggles you you personally have found as as an artist that, that you'd like to share <clears throat> only only the ones that i brought up you know okay great uh, which is basically an industry that that has become so lawyer heavy in the way they uh announce their their dictates uh, that's that's a, that's pretty severe to me if, if people want to know why they see so little work come out of me in the current climate of comics today, you can be traced directly to that. I I just can't abide by their rules. I mean, we all have to we all have to make decisions. I, I was about to say we all have to follow rules. No, we all have to abide by our conscience. Mine just happens to work in a certain way that doesn't allow me to endorse things that I, I think are just plain out the lunch. Uh, people smoke cigarettes. Last I checked, they still do. But when when some you know leftist organization comes out and says, uh, you know, <clears throat> I mean, they even have things in movies now: smoking, swearing, sexual content, and smoking. Okay, where did that crap come from? Well, it came from a bunch of people that that I want very little to do with in my life. But when that kind of stuff takes over, um, <clears throat> woe to the industry. And it's not the people that, that make up those rules. It's the people that ended up following them. It's the people that end up saying yes to them. That's where the problem comes. So that's why it's impossible for me to say yes to people that I think are out to lunch. And has, it, it has nothing to do with, with anything other than some, some bizarre, skewed personal agenda with, with what they think is right and wrong. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't take drugs. <clears throat> will I will I draw people that smoke and drink? Yeah, 
it's part of life. It's part of the dramatic experience of, you know, of what you what you do when you tell stories in comics. <clears throat> so we're supposed to excise every little thing that someone is some freak is is uh, is uh, offended by. You know, does anyone really? Who wants to? Who wants to believe that kind of stuff? Who wants to be under those kind of those kind of constrictions? Mm. That is the number one thing that is that is uh, <clears throat> that has uh, more or less banished me from consenting to do a, doing a lot more work in comic. Is that is that garbage that I I have a real problem with because I know it's nonsense. <clears throat> and what eventually when it's exposed to nonsense, you know. <clears throat> Maybe people will see it for what it was, but <clears throat> think of the McCarthy hearings. Everyone was scared to death to speak up. They all knew it was wrong, but <clears throat> if you did, the majority said you would be blacklisted. People paid with their lives, and they were never free of that that kind of uh, <clears throat> that kind of tarring. Okay, learn from history, people, and uh, and from that learn how to make decisions about what you're going to say yes to and what you're simply not going to be part of. That's how I'm going to end this, Chris.